Uh-oh. I think you guys are live. Hello! I am Tara, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less with over 1,200 recipes and tips to help you save money on your grocery bill, even with picky eaters. We are Mike and Tara from Living on a Dime to Grow Rich. Yes! Because we are... We are action verb. We are action verb? We're growing rich. <laughs> Actually, we're encouraging you to do that. Yes. That's why. As we go along, we want you to know that you can do it too because there's no excuses. We want you to start with your grocery bill. And that's why every show we promote our Dining on a Dime cookbook because we have sold hundreds of thousands of copies. Everybody that has bought this cookbook has said that <laughs> they save with the first trip to the grocery store, and you can too. Yes. Today we are making a $3 complete dinner, $3 complete dinner for, for the whole family. The whole family of four. And this recipe is my Italian chicken on page 257. It has been crazy hot here in Colorado for September. I feel like I'm being cheated out of fall. Really? Because we had to turn on the air conditioner on September 23rd, and that's wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm sure our people in Georgia are saying, cry me a river. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure they are. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> but in Colorado, that's why I moved here, and it's wrong. So. Anyway, okay, this is a super simple recipe. It is three ingredients or four if you want. Chicken, lemon pepper is optional. Onion and Italian dressing. Oops, I forgot my onion. Can you have me an onion, Dave? And uh, this recipe bakes in the oven. But because it was like 89 degrees today, which is wrong here in Colorado, was it? Ooh, um, really? Whoa, Denise is 102 here today. So oh, I don't not... even want to know. Um, <laughs> because it was like 89 here, I am going to try this recipe in the Instant Pot. And I've never done it before in the Instant Pot. So we may have a success or we may have a failure. We will see. I'm hoping for a success. Um, Good luck. They are harvesting the corn. So I thought I would... Oh. In support of all our farmers in America, where my corn. They're also doing all the beetroots. Oh, that's very nice. And they're also doing all the sugar beets here. And I, mean, I sugar beets, yeah. Got a sugar beet for Jack. Well, you're right. Beetroots the same that thing. That got oh. yep. They got that got cut open. This is how they make sugar, which is kind of cool. And they have this big pile of sugar beets every fall. It's kind of cool walking every time we take Jack to school. We watch the sugar beet pile growing every day. Then when they go to take it to the plant, it gets smaller every day. Pretty cool. Okay. I'm a farmer at heart. What can I say? All right. You have a sugar beet? I do. I got one for you today. It fell on the ground off the truck. Pretty cool, Yay. huh? Should we try and make sugar out of it? Sure. It's pretty dirty. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we can. Just clean. Okay. <laughs> so, I am making this with the Instant Pot, and I'm making it with potatoes, okay? And stay tuned to the end, guys, because we're going to do a giveaway of um, my quick and easy menus quick cookbook right here. And I found, I'm doing some cleaning. I found how to make soap for beginners. This is a bound copy. This is only available in ebook. I've got five of these. I'm going to give one away today if one of you are soap makers and you want to How did you get a bound do that. Copy? That was when we went to the soap conference. Oh, wait, what? Okay, so I have some potatoes here and I want to show you. See how the potatoes are green? Don't eat the green part. That's gross. Some people say it's poisonous. I don't know if it's poisonous or not, but I just peel off all the skin for the green part and then... Your potatoes are still good, um, but the green part is nasty. I think it tastes bitter myself, but... Oh, cat lover's on. Oh, cat lover, we haven't seen you for a while. Well, that's only because I haven't been doing the comments, but... Um, okay, 
So then, I've got my little Instant Pot here. We're going to give a go. I have the rest of my potatoes already peeled in some water with some salt to keep them from getting brown. So I'm going to take my last one. Now, I quartered these, okay? And I don't know if this recipe is going to work, guys, and I just already messed it up. Oops, I was supposed to brown my chicken first. Oh dear. Okay, so let's grab, we gotta do this right because you know, don't do it right. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so we're gonna shove all our potatoes. Now it's too big and now I don't have enough space and it's falling all over and I need another bowl. <laughs> ah! Now it's all falling off. No! Like baking bowl? Okay. Yeah. Uh. Here. <laughs> okay. This show is not starting off very well. Five second rule. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. Now, for those of you worried about eating something that fell on the floor, first of all, just rinse it off. It's not going to kill you, especially after you cook it, okay? Just make sure there's no nasty stuff on there. All right. Um... Saute, that's what I want to do. So, I've got my chicken here that I have had marinating in the sauce all day. Now, right, since we're not slow cooking this, I put it in the marinade, and all it is is a cheapo Italian dress, bottle of Italian dressing. I happen to get this one for free. I We have a recipe in Dining on a Dime for Italian dressing that's really good make homemade. I usually just make homemade because we don't really use Italian dressing that much. Now, I'm sticking all these chicken breasts in here and then I'm pouring all of the sauce on there. And we are going to give this a go, excuse me, to see if we can brown this, okay? And while that's doing that, I just lost my knife. Smells I'm going to cut up my onion. Smells good already. Oh, Mama Bee wants to know what a sugar beet is. A sugar beet is what they make sugar out of. I know, um, I know some sugar comes from cane, but they yeah. there are beets that are like, um, well, they're like turnips or rutabagas. Yeah. This is actually a really I, small one right here. Oh, wait, they can't see it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Actually, because of the weather here... Apparently, we're like the sugar beet capital of the world or something. I think we grow more sugar beets than anywhere, of if the I remember. World? Well, I think somebody said that. Wow. And I, feel special, right? I don't know if that's true or not, but you can come back to me, Dave. Oh, okay. Okay. Phyllis says, Tara looks so cute today. Now, why isn't this sizzling? I have it on saute. Oh, is there smoke coming? Oh yeah, it looks like there's smoke starting to come. Wait, smoke? Oh. <laughs> Steam. Steam. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to cut up my onions in here and saute those along with my chicken. If we saw smoke, I'd recommend getting a new one. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so all the fields around us have sugar beets and corn, which corn should be illegal in Colorado because it takes so much water. And we do not have water, but you know... People seem to think we need to grow corn for ethanol, which is ridiculous, but I won't get started on that. Now, normally... <laughs> oh, Margaret says during World War II, that's the only sugar we could get. Hmm. I believe it, yeah. Um, normally, if I leave the skin on my potatoes, I rub my potatoes with baking grease right here. I keep it stored in the fridge, and then I sprinkle it with some... Um, sea salt or a big salt. Oh yeah, now it's starting to do something. Okay, um, <clears throat> that gives it extra flavor. Now, when I'm doing baked potatoes with a roast, I will put the roast in the oven and um, put it in, get it going, then about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how big the potatoes are, I will rub them in bacon grease, sprinkle them with the salt, and put them in foil and stick them in the oven. Now, I don't waste wrapping each individual one in oil. 
I just put it in a pan and put foil on top and cook it that way. But you can do it however you want. Um, and that is how to make really good tasting potatoes. Now, for these, I'm doing sort of a, not really mashed potato, but more like a boiled type potato is what I'm trying for these. And we'll see if this works. I don't know, guys. I haven't done this. Sherry hopes to win in one of the soap books and says, I've never used an Instant Pot. Is it similar to a pressure cooker? It yes. It is a pressure it cooker. It is a pressure cooker. Yeah. Yep. And this recipe, if you guys are wondering, page 257 in the 20th anniversary edition. Oh, let me go back um, Michael put the link in there. Also, if you guys haven't signed up for our newsletter, go to livingonadime.com, click free newsletter at the top, and we send out a newsletter once a week with helpful hit, hints and tips on how to help you save money in grocery bill. Now, this chip dinner idea is an easy Italian chicken. Did I do it good? Smells awesome. Did you hear what I did there? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're wondering how to make Italian chicken, it is not rocket science, in case you missed. It is just a thing of dressing with your chicken breasts and a little bit of onion if you want you don't have to and a little bit of lemon pepper if you want you don't have to uh, now i'm gonna season mine here so you were saying it's hot here huh were you saying you were saying it's hot here yeah right? like right now you think it's hot well it was like 90 degrees today it was but now was it, it seems pretty nice although oh, I'm, it's I'm getting cooler yeah you're in shorts though and you're not <laughs> yeah that's true um okay right so let's see so we're getting this i'm trying to brown it before i cook it and here's the thing with the instant pot we were working on an instant pot cookbook but today i talked to my assistant heidi and we have changed our mind <laughs> we're not going to do an instant pot cookbook we are going to do another cookbook that we're going to put some instant pot recipes in but really, we are having a super hard time finding recipes that are easy and good tasting for the Instant Pot. If you guys have a recipe and you want to send it to us, we will give you credit in our new book and send you this book when it comes out, probably mid to late next year. Um, but really, to find good recipes that aren't just rice and eggs and broth or shredded chicken, we aren't really finding very many good recipes. So send them our way if you guys have something that your family just says, wow, that's delicious, or whoever you feed it to and they like it. Um, go ahead and send it to editor at livingonadime.com and we'll try out your recipe. And if we use it, I'll send you a cookbook. But um, we're, we're just having, I don't know, we just aren't really having success with finding them. I made, I've made rice three times in it, and every time the family has been like, Mom, this is gross. It's all dried out. And I'm like, okay. So I keep adding more water each time, and it's supposed to be one cup of water to one cup of rice, and it is not working. And we are at high altitude, so maybe that matters, but Have you tried I don't know. Doubling huh? water? Have you tried doubling water? To well, rice? I might, yeah. Okay. Hey, where, are, where are all of you that are? It's 100 degrees. Oh, not complaining about that here. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, man. All right. Any questions or comments while we're waiting for this to brown? Um, a lot of people saying that they're just here and they're ready to go and enjoying the show. Uh, Vicky says, loving the recipes I made from your Dining on a Dime cookbook. Nothing better than good food and saving money at the same time. Thank ah, you. Ah, thanks. Yay. Um, okay, so what is included? Well, not really getting browned yet. Okay. Hmm. Mostly it's just comments, not so many okay. questions yet. Um, Although some people are wondering if they should do an Instant Pot. We're not really sure we would recommend it particularly. Okay, I will tell you guys, from what my assistants have been testing recipes for what we thought was going to be an Instant Pot cookbook, and my testing, I can't say that I would spend the money to get one. Now, a wonderful viewer sent me this one, and I am really trying to give it a good try. But, honestly, I think it's just a big, bulky appliance. You can cook faster on the stove and better just actually better on the stove it's it tastes better 
food just tastes better roasted in the oven. And I get in the summer you don't want to do that, but the other nine months out of the year, I would just use your oven and have really good tasting food. Um, because that slow roasting just really brings out the flavor. Now, this cheap dinner idea is $3 and it's for the whole meal. So what are we having for this whole meal? We're having Italian chicken. We're having um, potatoes. I don't know how you would call it because I'm not really frying them, but I'm not, I don't know what you would call it. But anyway, we're cooking potatoes. And then we're also having a broccoli raisin salad for dinner. So those are the things. Now, I spent about $1.99, $2.00 spent two dollars on the chicken spent about a quarter on this and this was about 75 cents uh, so i was gonna say for those of you sorry I didn't interrupt. Go ahead. but for those of you who are saying uh, who don't have an instant pot and you're wondering uh even though tara is trying it in the instant pot today the recipe that i'm sharing is is it for the crock for pot? the oven or the grill and you can do this on the stove top too. This is one of those versatile recipes. You can cook it on the stove top oh, too. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was looking through this thinking, shoot, if I had room in the book, I would add stove top too, but I don't think we have space in the book. Um, we're redoing some stuff in, in dining on a dime because we've had some printer issues. So poor Mike for two and a half weeks now has been working on it. We have been working and working with printer issues, and we're just about to have our head explode. Today I was thinking, I'm going to finish this part of the project today. And I got part of the way into it, and my computer started saying, you don't have permission to save this to your computer. I'm like, what do you mean I don't have permission? It's my computer. It's my computer. <laughs> okay, so this is starting to get a little brown, although I don't understand why. Wow. One side oh. is really browned and the other side isn't. Gee, so Lynn Kunish says, I will send you my ribs recipe for it. Tara loves ribs, so she will yeah. be. Very, See, look yeah. like over here, it's super brown, but over here when I turned it, it wasn't. I don't know why that is. Did you rotate hmm. and flip them all? Yeah, I flipped them all. Uh, oh, Julie says, made a cheesecake in mine. If it was good, send us the recipe and we'll try yeah, it. Yeah, send us the recipe. I know you, I've heard you you can make really good cheesecake and really good deviled eggs, but honestly, guys, for the three or four things that I hear people making broth, yogurt, eggs. They say yogurt? Yeah, but yogurt, you can, all of those, you can do on your oven or use your crock pot and save yourself, you know, doing a whole thing. So I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to become one with it. I'm not doing real well. Okay, so I'm going to pour my potatoes on top. And I'm going to put my water in just a little bit so I just make sure I have enough. And then I'm going to add a little bit more Italian dressing on my potatoes. And then we're going to get this puppy going. Elizabeth says, okay. we have summer 11.5 months out of the year and I'd still rather use the oven. Although, yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, it just, the food tastes better. And here's the thing, guys. Um, okay, let me see how to do this. Hold so on. Lynn Kunish was saying she likes the pressure cooker when it's hot in the summer. Is that because it yeah, doesn't get so I could, of the Yeah, year? so I could see this would be really good for summer cooking. I could see that. Um... Okay, we're going to give this a try for 15 minutes and see what happens. We've really had a challenge getting rice to turn out. Yeah, it's, it's we've made three kind batches of, of rice. crunchy, it's, like it's not quite done. Yeah, it's it, the, I used the recipe from the Instant Pot cookbook and it said one cup of water to one cup of rice. Every time it has not turned out and I keep adding in half cup in, increments more water, but it's just... It's not working, and so, I don't know. But this is how to make Italian chicken in the Instant Pot. If it turns out, we'll see. Kim says, wait until your Instant Pot says hot, then put the chicken in to cook. Oh, okay, is that what you do? Oops. Okay, I'm not an instructions kind of a girl. So a lot of people so, were asking for Instant Pot Dave? recipes, so that's why um, we are 
Tara is trying some of our regular recipes in the Instant Pot, so... To see if they'll work, yeah, from dining. And, and the goal would be, since we have struggled getting it to do better than our normal cooking on the stove or in the oven, uh, I think the goal would be to find recipes that we find are more productive in there. Yeah. So, um, and I will say, you know, Mom and I and Heidi and I were talking about this, two separate conversations, not together. <laughs> but we got to thinking that people... I think because we've, in the last 30 to 40 years, have been using the crock pot so much that I don't think people know what really good tasting food tastes like because we're so used to having this mushy food from the crock pot or really quick hamburger helper type meals that we don't know that you can have really good tasty meals in a quick amount of time with cheap dinners for, you know, in 10, 15 minutes of, of prep time. So <laughs> you need to tell your kids this. Maria says, my family better say, wow, that's delicious or else I'm not cooking anymore. <sighs> yeah, I need to tell my family that. I do not cook separate meals if somebody doesn't like something. I can tell you that. Ooh. Yeah. Um, okay, so any other questions before we get on to our next topic while this is cooking? Uh, I don't know that I see questions, just more comments. Let's see. Okay. Yep, just comments. Oh, uh, Busy Lady says, Busy Lady 35 says it heats frozen meatballs well. And yeah. actually, Tara did make a mm -hmm. roast the other day, and the first time she made a roast, it, it was really tough. But the other day when you made it, it was about the same as yeah. in the oven, but it just took longer. Yeah, I think people, if you're having a tough roast in the Instant Pot, you're not cooking it long enough. And I know people say, oh, you cooked it too long. I don't think that's the case. I have never, ever, ever had a tough roast. I've had a roast for 15 hours in the oven, but if you put a cup of water in it, it's never tough. So, hey, handsome dude. What are you guys making? We're making Italian chicken potatoes and broccoli salad. Is this thing? Yes. Have faith. Believe uh, mom can do it. Heather is asking, is the broccoli salad recipe in the book? No. This one is actually going to be in our next Dining on a Dime cookbook that, that we're having a Dining on a Dime 2 coming out. We tried for Christmas with this, this printer issue. It is on the website. With the printer issue, the Dining on a Dime 2 got put behind, and so we are going to have to bring that out next year. Okay? All right. Are we ready to move on? Uh, sure. I'm going to share the broccoli okay. salad recipe here, but you can also go to our website, livingonadime.com. Denise said, Tara, have you ever tried search. raw potatoes so good? I love raw potatoes. I could just eat raw potatoes all day long, and I would be a happy camper. So, Okay. So today we are talking about, I think this is one of the biggest ways to save money. Yes. No, not yet. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. Okay. This, I think, is one of the biggest ways to save money. And I think you guys are going to um, say, well, I don't understand how these situations are saving money. And I'm going to explain how each of these is saving money because... This is a huge problem in our culture. What is the problem? No one will say no. <gasps> Here's the thought. And I'm here to tell you today, no is a complete sentence. Oof. Now, I don't know if these are the people that came up with it or not, but um, Henry Cloud and, and uh, is it John Townsend? Yep. Wow, I think they, I saw this first from them, but no is a complete sense. Now, how does this work with saving money? I'm going to explain. Let me tell you some of the things that happened to us this week. And, um, how no is a complete sentence worked into that. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> For us, it's that time of year, the schools are sending fundraisers home. No, oh, wow. we have never done any school fundraisers in the 15 plus years that we've had, 16 years, I guess, that we've had kids in school. The schools make enough money 
you can argue that all you want, but the schools make enough money. They do not need to be having fundraisers. They need to be managing their money better. It is wrong for them to ask parents and kids to go out peddling popcorn or whatever for fundraising. We do not do fundraising. Now, how does that help? We don't have to feel guilty when the other kids in the neighborhood come around because we asked their parents to buy stuff. We don't have to buy all of their stuff. You may have your one kid in two fundraisers a year, but then you have 10 kids coming to your door or calling you or texting you or whatever that you're buying from. That gets crazy expensive to the tune of it could be three to $500 a year if you're buying stuff from all the nieces, nephews, kids, friends' kids and all of that. So for school fundraisers, for us, no is a complete sentence. Now, this week, we had an issue where um, in Jack's class, they are showing nude pictures and art and Ooh. calling this art. Now, to their um, credit, they did email and ask the parents if they wanted uh or if we would give consent. But here's what it said. If you do not give consent, you, are res you the parents, are responsible for figuring out what kind of art those kids are going to see instead when they're pulled out of class. No, it is a complete sentence. My child is not allowed to see that stuff at 10 years old, that's ridiculous. Thank you, Mother. You're welcome. If Mike wouldn't stood in the school naked, they would call the police on him. That would scare me. <laughs> if I wouldn't stood at the school like this naked, they would call the police on me. Why is it okay for us to be showing this in so-called art? It's not art. It's ridiculous. Furthermore, as the parent, it is not my job to teach my kids. If I want to teach my kids at home, then it's my job. But if you, the teacher, are doing the job, it's your job, not mine. No is a complete sentence. The teacher still kept trying to argue and I said, I don't care what it does to his grades. He can flunk the class for all I care. I do not care. I am not doing your work. If you can't find a picture that is appropriate for him, then he can read a book. No, it's well, a complete <clears throat> sentence. And it's problem when they know it's going to be problematic and they ask knowing that people are going to say no. And then it's like, well, <coughs> you have to figure it out then. <laughs> or, or everyone else is doing it. <clears throat> And I was thinking, well, yeah, but you tell the kids not to behave that way. So anyway, sorry. No. And, you know, <laughs> I'll tell you, this kind of three thing really frustrates me that whenever this stuff happens, we are only one or one of a couple of people who say anything. Parents, you need to start standing up to these schools. These schools are not God. And you need to start standing up and telling them, no, you're not going to be teaching my kids this. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, the next thing, school pictures. You do not have to have school pictures. 25 to 50 bucks for ugly pictures. They never get the kids smiling. They look horrible. You can take a better picture on your cell phone than they can at school. Yet another fundraiser no is a complete sentence. So <clears throat> oh, one thing on that is Tara's not being critical of the schools particularly or the pictures or whatever. Or, well, the, the school pictures, I mean. But I think what, okay, well, what I was going to say is <laughs> I think what the point she's trying to make is people do these things because that's what you do. So yes. the reason why it costs $119 for your elementary students' pictures 
is because everyone thinks that's just the thing you do. Yeah. And so everyone spends way too much money mm -hmm. on those and so things they take advantage when of they that. want to say no. <laughs> Actually, we were talking to some people who were saying they just feel bad to say no about things, but um, you, if you don't mm -hmm. tell people no sometimes, especially when you feel like, I, I don't know about this, then everyone's going to step all over you. Yeah. All the time. We're going to talk about that. Oh, sorry. Okay. I get hit. Mom, uh, is this supposed to be hissing? Well, I don't know if it's supposed to be hissing or not. And we'll Elizabeth, <laughs> I agree with you. Elizabeth says on the school fundraisers, the portion the school makes is a pittance. Better to write a check directly to the school. And we have offered to do that. Yeah. Um, because, honestly, I, I think it's better for the kids and the school, really, because the school would get a bigger component. But there's, kids are under a lot of pressure sometimes to sell things that... The school isn't even getting much benefit for. Yeah. Okay, next. Um, family members asking you for money, but then they're not spending money wisely. Guys, no is a complete sentence. It is not okay for family members to ask you for money when you're working hard and you're being frugal with your money, and then they are just blowing it on stuff. If they're smoking, if they're drinking, if they have car payments, it once again, if you can afford the payments, you can afford to save up. If they are buying um, food that's not just good basic food, if they're buying a bunch of junk food and sodas and those kind of things, if you're um, buying houses you can't afford, if you're racking up your credit cards, getting nails done, toes done, um, if you are going on vacations, that kind of thing. Oh, phew. I was starting to worry me for a minute. Okay. Um, it is not okay for them to be asking you, and it is okay for you to say no with no explanation. You do not have a, to give an explanation. Why should you go to work and work three, two, three weeks to pay for that thousand dollars that they loaned you? You could take off work and stay home and enjoy a time off. That's totally crazy. So it is okay to say no, period. It's a complete sentence, okay? This is not helping for keywords, is it? I'm so sorry. <laughs> so <I'm> okay. <laughs> not there. Hmm? But no doesn't have a subject, and it doesn't have a predicate. It but it is a complete <laughs> sentence. <laughs> okay, you're learning too much English right now. <laughs> Um, kids, when kids are under 16 and they want their own phone and they're not willing to get a job and pay for it, no is a complete sentence. Your kids do not need their own phone. We have gotten so paranoid as parents that every child has a phone down to kindergarten. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. There is no reason kids need phones. Now, I will give that single mom who lives in a horrid neighborhood somewhere in New York City or LA or something, if you wanna get them a flip phone or something for emergencies because they have to walk home through a bad neighborhood or something like that, okay, I will give you that. The rest of the time, I'm sorry, there's no reason for kids needing a cell phone. They don't need a cell phone. So once again, no, period. All right, uh, when the kids go to the store, that's a saving. The That's cell phone's huge. right there. The savings is like three to five hundred dollars a year, right there, just for the service. That doesn't include the five hundred to a thousand dollars that most of these people are spending on phones to give their kids. Okay, so and even if you spend two hundred dollars, I don't care. It's there's Not no reason mention, for it. They buy the latest iPhones, which are like iPhone tens and yeah, iPhone you know. I know. Which One of my friends is like an extremely expensive phone. He just takes to school every day and plays yeah. on it. Yeah, and here's another thing. Then the kid breaks it and the parents yell at the kid. I'm sorry, but you have no right to yell at that kid for breaking an expensive phone when you were stupid enough in the first place to buy it for him. That is just stupidity. It is. It's, that's all it is. Flat out stupidity. Okay. Kids buying a toy at the store. 
Guys, your kids do not need a toy at the store every single time you go to the store. I know people who literally buy their kids a toy every single time they go to the store. Then the parents complain that they have too many toys, they don't play with their toys, they don't take care of their toys. My kids only get toys for their birthday and Christmas, and then it's a limited amount. We don't have 60 packages for each kid under the Christmas tree, okay? <clears throat> so once again, at the store, no, period. I don't care how they keep going on and on, no. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, neighbor kid next door, he, he um, went to the store once uh, to buy clothes, and he got like six toys and a pair of rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> six toys and a rollerblade, and they went for clothes, oh brother. Okay. Um, yes. I was just going to say, Denise says, I say if you can't pay for it, you don't get it regarding the phone. We do, we have a rule that's you, you have to pay for it yourself, but you also have to be 16 with a license and an income. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, okay. The next thing is your fit, your extended family. Now this is a big one Ooh. and I know I get it. Um, <laughs> Jack. Elizabeth says that no has an implied subject. <laughs> has an implied subject. Huh? He's smiling. <laughs> Not wrong. Okay, here's the thing um, also, and this applies to like extended family, and you hear these things all the time. Well, you guys are getting ready to have kids. You have to go buy a brand new car so those kids will be safe in your car. You have, I don't care, You. it's okay if you have a car payment. Everybody has a car payment. I want my grandkids to be safe. Or, well, you guys can't live in that neighborhood. I, my grandkids are, are, are living there. You can't live in that house because my grandkids are living there. You guys have to buy a new house. Here, let me help you with the down payment. Even though you can't afford the payment, but mom and dad are gonna give you a down payment so you can get in it and get yourself in over your head for the next 30 years. Or, well, it's a family vacation and we're all going and, and it's our family time. Or, well, but it's Christmas. I don't care if the tickets are $1,000 for you guys to fly out for Christmas. It's our family Christmas, you can't not have a family Christmas. What are we gonna do if we don't have a family Christmas? That's just, my. what am I gonna do? I'm gonna sit here all by myself for Christmas. No is a complete sentence. Stop letting your family and your extended family and even your spouse, if they do this, manipulate you <clears throat> into debt and expenses that you can't afford. There's no reason for you to go home at Christmas if you don't want to. Now, maybe if grandpa so-and-so has cancer or something and they think it's his last year, okay, I get that. But as a general rule, non-emergency type situation in general, there's no reason that you should let your parents, your siblings, best friends, whatever, guilt and manipulate you into spending money to the tune of thousands of dollars a year, even hundreds of thousands of dollars in the case of a house that you can't afford. Or guilt and manipulate you into anything really. Yeah, period. But Because there's a trend of, it's not just in the money area, but in, in all sorts of ways, people and families and other things tend to try to manipulate other people but if you are if you let yourself be manipulated everyone will learn that that's who you are yeah and then they'll do it to you all the time yeah. oh janice says this is the best show ever <laughs> oh this is Yay. the greatest show <laughs> okay uh, oh, miss t says we had two family vacations while i was growing up neither to any disney park etc i turned out to be a good human being anyway yeah and you know there was another comment learn the difference between wants and needs and i'm getting ready to go into that actually next but well, i would say for those of you who it's okay to go to disney park but for those of you who think you absolutely have to do it for your kids i went when i was 10 and i almost don't remember it at all yeah so it's it it's not like it's a huge thing if your kids miss yeah. that. And especially when especially you... standing in line. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. Especially when you are first married. If any of you guys are first married or thinking about married, you need to set these standards immediately as soon as you are married. And it is going to be hard. But let me tell you, there are certain things that we had to set down and our lives would have been miserable if we wouldn't have. You're talking about like other family. Yes. Yeah. Like your extended family. And well, because families have a hard time. I mean, even normal families have a hard time adjusting to the fact that, you, that you're not the child anymore. Yeah. Or if you're the parent, letting go of them, which is why we're kind of thinking about that with our kids. Yeah. Realizing that we have to let go of them mm -hmm. in that way. And yeah. when you get married, it can become a really big clash that can last the mm -hmm. rest of your life if you're not yeah. careful. Guys, post questions if you have them because I'm getting close to being done. And so we'll answer your questions or comment if you want um, and we'll do that. Okay, next. This, I think, is the biggest one of all the no issues. And that is saying no to yourself. Now... Ooh. As I told someone, and we won't name any names, but we love her to death. <laughs> but as I was talking to someone today, I brought up the topic and I said, we're going to be doing, talking about no is a complete sentence. She said, I know, I'm just a people pleaser. <laughs> I said, I know. That makes you terrible, afraid Terrible, terrible place to be in yes. life. I, I have been that a lot in the past and I can say that it it's just completely exhausting and there's no benefit. Exactly. And actually one thing she said is what if uh, what if they don't want to be my friend anymore and I was thinking if you That is not a true if you friend. Don't do things for them or give things to them when they're being unreasonable with you and trying to put their responsibilities on you, then they're going to ditch you as a friend immediately when there's any kind of problem in your life that you need a friend. Yeah. And so, so, what so you don't the, want to please them because that just, it, it, it makes it hard to see who your real friends really are. Yeah. Okay. So one of the biggest things you need to do is say no to yourself. Now, this particular person said, but I want people to like me. And what if they think I'm a B word, you know, a female dog. And I said, so what? That's their opinion. You can't change. It. If that's the way <laughs> they are, they're not a true friend. And so you need to say no to protect yourself and you need to say no to yourself in the sense of no, I am not going to be a doormat. No, I'm not going to be there to babysit your kids. No, I'm not going to do this. And this particular person had said, well, but I let the neighbor's dog out every day because it's an old dog and it can't go all day long. It's not your dog. That's it's not your dog. It's not that a responsibility is, that you chose to take on. That is not your responsibility. Um, we had neighbors that left their dog out to bark incessantly for 12 hours a day. I finally had to keep calling the city and reporting them because it would not stop. They came over to my doorstep, step, threatened to kill us, threatened to burn down our house, all this stuff. And the woman had the audacity to say to me, I'm at work all day. What am I supposed to do with my dogs? That's not my responsibility. Thankfully, I had a neighbor who was armed and came over and helped escort them off my porch. But you guys, no is a complete sentence. And if that person doesn't like it, even if they're threatening to kill you, I didn't sit there and say when they were threatening to, to kill us and burn down our house. No, I didn't say, oh, well, okay, you work all day, so I'll just stay at home and listen to your dogs bark incessantly. No. I have enough self-respect for myself that I'm not going to listen to that all day long just because you're being irresponsible with your dogs. The other thing, um, this is a big one for stay-at-home moms. Never been a problem for me, I'll admit, <laughs> because every person that's tried this with me, I put it down right away and say, yeah, no, that ain't happening. Well, stay-at-home moms... You can't imagine that you would be that way. <laughs> stay-at-home moms get asked all the time to watch working parents' kids because they can't take off work 
because their kids are sick or whatever. Now, if it is a single mom who is really having a hard time and who is truly trying hard, then I would say that's fine. Go ahead and, you know, if you feel comfortable with it, then watch their kid, you know, occasionally, that's fine. But here's the thing. I have had neighbors coming to me and they have said, you know, can you watch our kids? Because we just, we don't have anybody. We don't have a babysitter and we just, we don't know what we're going to do. No, I am raising my kids. If you prefer to go to work and not do that job, that is fine. But I have my job that I am raising my kids and I'm not going to be raising your kids along with mine because you want to go to work and buy the new car. You want to go to work and pick up your Starbucks every day going to work. You want to go to work and buy that new car. You want to go to work and get that new house. It ain't happening, honey. Sorry, you're going to have to figure it out yourself. Sure enough, all these people have figured it out themselves. I, they asked me once. I told them no once. I didn't go into my whole spiel for that. I'm giving that for you guys. But I just said no. I have enough to do with my own kids that I'm not watching other people's kids. Sorry, you can call me a B word all you want. <laughs> But I'm not going to sit here. Is that what they said? Is that what that was in reference to? Yes. But I'm not going to sit here and me be put out because you want the convenience of not having to find another sitter or you want the convenience of having the new car and the new house and eating out all the time and buying the kids everything they want. Sorry. Ain't going to happen. So... That is my spiel on no is a complete sentence. We're going to take comments and questions right now. But guys, this is a huge, huge problem. And I know there are people pleasers out there and I get it. I know two of them fairly well. One of them I live with on a daily basis. Wait, sorry, I missed that. People pleaser. Oh, pe uh, <laughs> I'm a lot less than I used to be though, right? You are doing way better than you used to do. And there are yes. times where I realize, wait, this is a, something, I'm not sure if this person is manipulating me or not. And I realize this is something important to know, mm -hmm. especially if you've had some kind of mm -hmm. traumatic experiences before in your life. I realize this is an area where I can't necessarily no. trust my yes. judgment. And when I, when I think, wait, could this be one of those circumstances? I will say, um... Because I know yeah. that she has the clear vision on that. And ask a family member. You know, say, if, if it's something that you're questioning, first of all, if you have to question it, they probably are manipulating you and using you. But if you're not sure, ask a friend or family member and say, is this person taking advantage of me? And all you have to do to say to the person who's asking you what to do, what they want you to do all you have to do is say you know what i'll get back to you on that give your time some some time to step back excuse me you can think about it even if they are headed to work and their kid starts throwing up you'll have to say you know what i need to take 10 minutes and think about that and i'll get back to you if they can't be 10 minutes late then they will find someone else who can do that so all right, let's get questions. Actually, uh, Cindy was asking, is dinner done? It's got one minute. One minute, okay. Um, then we'll see if this works. And Cindy also said, being a Christian, it's hard for me to say no. You know, that's one way that a lot of people can manipulate you uh, or try to manipulate you if they know well, you're a Christian. Aren't you a Christian? And, you're... yeah, or how come I'm not, how come you're not helping me in the kids ministry and I think the kids ministry needs help but certain people are wired for it and certain are not but but I would say um the boundaries book by Cloud and Townsend is yeah. that's the one that we keep mentioning it's uh the, the they're Christian therapists and it's not super super it's not like preachy if you're not Christian but if you are Christian it's even easier for them to help you be able to define that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And here's the thing. Just because you're a Christian does not mean you're a doormat. I help a lot of people. We help a lot of people. But we are selective in the people that we help. 
We know the people that we help. And I'm not going to be, there is nowhere in the Bible that says thou shalt be taken advantage of. It's not there. Sorry, it's just not. You're to love people and actually one of the most loving things you can do is to tell people no. Because they need more no in their life. All right. Uh, okay, so I, um, uh, Kelly says the part in the Boundaries book that helped me the most is remembering we are called to carry each other's burdens, true burdens, but not called to carry, where we yeah. are all carried to, we are all called to carry mm -hmm. our own loads, which I think is brilliant. Yeah. Dynamite says my wife finds it hard to stand up against her family, and that was really hard with me, um, but I realized at certain points, wow, you know, in this circumstance, we are married, and it's my responsibility more to her now than to my parents. And there were times where I knew they were being unreasonable and it was highly stressful for me to have to kind of put up the boundary, but I knew it was the right thing to do. And it's really, it is hard. And I know some people struggle with it more than others. I struggled greatly, but still did it anyway, which is really mm -hmm. the only way you can handle mm -hmm. fear like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and April said when some of the neighbors found out I'm a stay-at-home mom, they had already planned how I was going to pick up pick up their kids from school and drive them around. Sorry, I'm not interested to be their friends. Guys, that is not being a friend. Those aren't friends. Those are manipulators. Yeah. And, it, like, if your friends won't be your friends unless you do things they want you to do, they're not really friends. Yeah, they're not by any stretch of the imagination. Um... All right, let's see. Any other questions that you had pulled out? Oh, let's see. Actually, go over here. This one looked like it might have. My cousin is really irritated with her mother-in-law because she wouldn't watch the new baby when she went back to work. Um, she raised her kids already. She deserves to have her time to herself now. You know what? I'm sorry. This is a big pet peeve for me. I think it's flat out wrong. Unless you are a single mom who's in a desperate type of situation, that's okay. But I think it's wrong for parents to be asking grandparents to watch the kids. I'm sorry. I just, our kids know that when they have kids, that unless it is some sort of a emergency type situation, we have raised our kids. It's their turn to raise their kids. They need to stay at home with their kids and raise their children I am not going to sit there and raise their children for them so they can go be driving the new car and the new house. I just, I see grandparent after grandparent after grandparent taken advantage of in this kind of situation. And it just is so sad. They should be enjoying their retirement and not having to work so hard. And here they're going around chasing toddlers or, or dealing with fussy babies or hauling kids all over creation for activities. I mean, it's well, just, I, it's wrong. I have but. some friends who are older than me who um, who kind of bring it on themselves a little because the kids expect them to do it and they do yeah. it. And when I say, well, you know, it's not really your, because they, they say I'm so stressed out because I have to do this, thinking, well, it's not your responsibility. Can you tell them I'm grandma, I'm not mom? And they say things like, well, I really like, being with the grandkids. Well, I could see, I'm sure I'm going to be that kind of person that's going to just absolutely love being with the grandkids. But nevertheless, there needs to be a boundary of, but I'm still gr the grandfather, mm. not the parent. <clears throat> because even if you love them and you want to see them a lot, if you, if it becomes a habit that you do it every day, it's going to become your job. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just not healthy. Yeah. Not by any stretch of the imagination. And actually, um, uh, I know this is something that, Nebo, your yeah. lack of planning is not my emergency. Yeah. Absolutely. That's like one of my favorite sayings. <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys know me. I mean, I'm not Miss Planner by any means. But I don't expect you to go in and fix it for me when I haven't planned correctly. Yeah. But, Yeah. But, um, actually, Bob says I watch the grandkids all the time, uh, and and some some other stuff, and uh, basically just I think because he's liking it. I do have to say there was a time where uh, my grandfather had emphysema, and he it was unknown how long he had to live, 
and he couldn't really walk very much. And um, I was 13 at the time, and he and I spent like an entire summer together the whole time, mm -hmm. like just going out in the country. And he loved to dig for Native American Indian artifacts and stuff like that. And he had some friends that from, uh, I forgot what tribe, but anyway, uh, we, that was a great time with us together. But I was yeah. a little older and it was a time when I really needed that in my life. And I think he really appreciated it mm -hmm. at his place in life as well. Yeah. And and I don't think, you know, another thing, asking yeah. for people. That's the thing. Virginia says a lot of grandparents are actually raising the grandkids. Yeah. And that's the part that we think is really not okay. Particularly when it's pressured from the kids who just have the expectation that mom and dad yeah. are going to do it. And another example is when... Um, Families expect the grandparents to to step in and help or other people step in and help and I heard of this family that had a Really high number of kids and we'll say it's over 18 <laughs> kids and They just didn't know what they were gonna do because the mom was getting up all nights of the hour to change laundry and she was just exhausted because she had all these babies and she couldn't keep up with um, doing the laundry. Well, come to fit, find out, they were doing five loads of laundry a day. Five loads of laundry a day. Let's say you took off Sunday. That's... Who is it? Well, I wasn't going to say the name, oh, but oh, I didn't that's either. 30, that is 30 loads of laundry a week. There's no reason for it. Absolutely no reason. And so when you're not managing things correctly, I don't care if you want a fresh towel every time you take a shower. You don't call someone in and ask them to do your laundry. And this person said that they had someone coming in, helping them with their laundry until their older kids got old enough to do it themselves. But they had someone coming in who volunteered to help. I don't think that's right at all. There's no reason why you should be having fresh towels and fresh sheets every day, even for that ridiculous amount, crazy amount of family it's not someone else's responsibility to come in and do your laundry because you don't make your kids wear their clothes over and over again. There's no reason why they can't wear a pair of jeans for a week unless they're just outside getting completely filthy. And then you could go two or three days. Then they need to change from play clothes to going to school or going to church clothes. You can reuse towels. Your body is clean. When you get out of the bath or shower, there's no reason why you can't share towels. So anyway, yeah. Heidi says, I totally agree in that. I've already told my kids I will not be there to care. No. Let's, the thing is, ours understand that I probably would love to see grandkids when we have them, but they also understand that it's not going to become our job. So yeah. it can be our fun. And we'll, we'll definitely sugar them up and get them all excited and then send them home. <laughs> but, yeah. So, okay, I'm quick releasing this. Mike's going to grab last questions. Let's do our giveaway while we're waiting real quick. Okay, let Mike ask his questions Cheryl first. Cheryl says I'd be getting rid of some clothes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's no reason. You, you should do one load of laundry per person per week. And that's it. And that's high. With little kids, I would do one load per two or three kids. Now I get if you're having a barfing situation or a wet in the bed situation, I get that kind of thing. But on a normal basis. Well, and it was nice, even though, uh, sorry, I didn't quite hear that part of the story. So I think I'm following it, but I might be on a different track entirely. It was nice, like with Jill would... Um, particularly when Tara was feeling really bad, come over and take over for a little while. And that yeah. was nice. But we didn't think it was her responsibility to have to have them all the No, time. and I didn't ask her to do it. She saw that I needed help, and that's fine. And I'm not saying you can't help people out. But when it is a chronic, like this person with all the laundry, it was a years-long thing. That's uh, not okay. Cindy wants to know, are we going to test the temperature of the chicken? 
I'm, no, well, and I'll tell you why. I'll show you just a second. I think I know why. Um, okay, the thing's still not opening. Okay, so let's do, do you need me to YouTube. It? I am depressurizing it. Okay. YouTube. How to Make Soap for Beginners. This is not a regular book. It's a special one I had bound for a soap conference that I did not use. If you are interested in learning how to make soap, type in soap on YouTube and we'll draw somebody. And we do have uh, an ebook set of this. So if you don't win and you want, mm -hmm. and you're okay with the ebooks, it's ebooks and videos. Yep. On that set. Yep. This is just the book, the book though. Yes. And then on Facebook, we'll do quick and easy menus. Type in quick and we'll draw for someone to do quick while we're getting this going. Okay, this thing still is not opening. Okay. <laughs> Susan so. says, absolutely, my 15-year-old daughter does our family laundry and her college cousin pays her $7 a week to wash and fold his laundry as well. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Um, and now, Tony says, my kids did their own laundry at 10. I helped until they could handle it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, that's nice. Little Dragonfly said, so happy to hear this. Thank you, Tara. This is right on for me. Okay, I kind of paraphrased because I was looking. Um, looking at something else. But, uh, okay, just so you guys know on this Instant Pot, as far as how quick does this go, this took me 50 min no, 40 minutes of cooking, and I still can't get the thing open. And I only did the pressure for 15 minutes. So that's how long it takes to build up pressure and get pressure down. So if you're wondering on a time thing on the Instant Pot, um, this took a full 15 minutes. Now, if I would have cooked this on the, or 40 minutes, if I would have cooked this on the stove or in the oven, it would have been an hour in the oven and probably about 10 minutes on the stove, 15 minutes. Okay, so let's see if it worked though. Maybe it didn't work. I don't know. Oh, that looks delicious. Okay, Maybe it worked. Okay, so tip Dave. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It looks and smells good. It smells really good. Okay, so let's see. Wait, okay. Did you, oh, did you say quick for? Uh... Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, did everybody get? Quick um... is coming on on Facebook okay. side and soap is okay. coming on on YouTube you ready? side. Okay, here we go. For which one? Wherever you're at. Okay, go wait, ahead. Wait, hold on, hold on. Crystal, hold up. Is she using the Instant Pot now? Has she gone to the dark side? <laughs> no, I haven't yet, it. but I'll, we'll do it. Okay. Scroll. We were just wondering about you the other day, Crystal. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Stop. It is... Oh, little dragonfly. Well, there you go. Okay, <laughs> tell me your name and address. Tell me you won the soap book. And email it to editor at livingonadime.com. Okay. Next one. Oh, uh, this is the Facebook one? Yes, when you're over there. For quick, oh, whoops, hold on. It's not letting me do it. Oh, there we go, okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah, nah, 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 nah. It is Barbara Thomas. Yay. Woo! Okay, Barbara, same thing. Editor at livingonadime.com. Tell me you won the quick book. You guys have to tell me which book you won, and you have to give me your address, even if you've ordered from us, just to make sure it's correct, okay? Because once again, we are having issues with the post office, and Tara is about to go postal. Did I say that live? No, I'm not going postal. I do not get that upset over this stuff. Actually, it today makes we me just mad, decided it's just life. But I have just given up on the post office and realized they just can't get it together, so I'm just going to move on and sell more books and not worry about it. Okay, so here is why... I am not testing my temperature. Now, when you cook in the oven and when you cook in the Instant Pot, you should, oh yes, oh yes, oh! Something smells awesome. Okay, I think it worked. Now, let me show you the difference here. This is very interesting. Okay, here's the one that browned. Can you see, can they see this, Dave? Go down. You need to hold this over there so you can. No, I got it. Okay, there's Ooh. the one that browned. But look at this, I did them both the same time and in the same pot. Look at that. So that's definite uneven cooking there. I'm not sure why. But here's why I don't use a meat thermometer 95% of the time. Because when I cook my stuff, it falls apart with the fork. 
and if it falls apart with the fork, it is done. There is no way this is not done. Now, we will have, you can go ahead and come back up to me. Let's taste this and see. Also, if the pressure cooker goes for a while, there's so much oh, heat. that's good. That um, okay. it would probably be unnecessary to test it unless it just wasn't heating. I have to give the Instant Pot credit where it's due. It was not faster, but it is very tasty. So, this could be a meal that you put in, and if you forget it because you have to go pick up the kids at school or something, needed more salt. Mm-hmm. That's good. Okay. The food needs more salt, people. I got it. You haven't said now, that in a while. Now, I am turning this on saute Laura to, to evaporate know. some of the water to make a sauce for the chicken, okay? All right, here's the potatoes. Laura wants to know what time she should come over for dinner. You can come over right now. Okay, let's test the potatoes. I think you're about five hours away though, right? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Mmm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, I'm not very uh, Barbara, delicate. the book that you won was Quick and Easy Menus on a Dime. So Just tell me just quick. Just say quick and she'll know yeah. which one you mean. Yeah, no worries. And this book is not in print anymore. We just had some left. We're actually going to put mm. it into mm. a mm. different book. That's really good. That is really okay. good. Okay, I would say, guys... This is a success. Now, once again, I don't think it was faster, but it certainly tastes quite delicious. So, there's one for the Instant Pot. All Ooh, right, you have any last comment? Uh, Julie and, and Sybil say, I love your spice rack. Where did you get the spice rack? It is on our Amazon store. Mike will put a link there for you. We do have an affiliate for it because we have so many people asking. And if you click on that, we will get a small percentage on that. It and won't it cost just you helps, anymore. Yeah, it just helps us out. It doesn't cost you anymore, but Amazon likes us to promote things, so we do. So Brooke is saying, does it taste better when you do it in the oven? This time it's really good. This is really good. And I would say for this, I didn't like the browning, the way it browned. But I would say this is comparable to the oven. So Hope Float says uh, yeah. she likes it because the kitchen isn't hot and you don't have to stand over a hot mm -hmm. stove. Which is... So, Karen, and that is a plus. I will say, here's the thing. I think the Instant Pot is one of those things where it works for some things really well. But you need to really make sure that those some things are worth investing in. Well, particularly because it is going to take up space. That's one of our yeah. big issues is I don't where have are we going to put it? Yeah, I don't have a place to put it. Um but also in our circumstance we found that most of the things we make we can make as easy or more easily in another way mm -hmm. but definitely we don't live in a place where it's over 100 degrees that often and so most of the time. you know if it's if particularly for people that are doing it for heat that would be an issue we yeah. aren't sure we aren't totally sold on it yet but We're a, lot on of, a lot of people we know really love it. Is it easy to clean? Yeah, I would say it's fairly easy. I mean, it's big and bulky, but it's stainless steel, and it's, I don't think that it's real hard to clean. What? I just have a stainless steel scrubby thing, and I, you know, I do that. So, uh, um, uh-oh. Huh. I don't know what happened, Laura. I checked. I just clicked the link, and it, it went through to Amazon. So it goes to Amazon. The Amazon store link that we shared that has the, what was it? We were, oh, the spice rack. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it has our image on it like it's our channel, but it's actually at Amazon.com yeah. if you look in there. And wow. all the stuff on our Amazon store, these are things that I've actually used and I would recommend. And I'm really picky if something doesn't work, we should add more really things ticks to this me list. off. So I put it on there. Mm -hmm. See you, Alice. Alice says, thanks, guys. Love to chat about boundaries. Got to get back to work. All yes. Right. All right. Important. So, any last questions? Go to Facebook real quick. Let's see. Uh, sounds like something is bubbling. Yes. I'm bubbling. I'm boiling down the um, Italian dressing in water to let some of the water evaporate for a sauce for the chicken. Uh, oh, Courtney, did you get my beef rib recipe for the I Instant did. Pot I sent you? Yes. Yay. Thank you. And if you guys have Instant Pot recipes and we use them, we will give you that cookbook when it's done. It'll, it's probably going to be nine or ten months before it's done. 
but we will give you that book if we use your recipe oh. and send us your recipes to editor at livingonadime.com if you have some really good ones nothing basic like rice and eggs but i mean like whole meals that you have to cook in just one pot yeah so we have a couple of people asking if you could show the spice rack again What's really cool about this spice rack is that it has drawers that we can pull out and they sort of tip down so you can see everything pretty easily. Yep. Did you screw that down or is it just sitting in there? It's just sitting in there. Wow. But you can screw it down. Wow. And then she puts little labels on there so and we more easily know, yeah. so I more easily know. And I'll tell you, spices, for 24 years I was fighting my spices. And I don't have a ton of spices. Actually, what you guys don't know is like... Half of those spices are doubles or triples because they're from my emergency food stash and I rotated them out. But I did have enough spices that it was irritating. Every time I pulled a spice out, drove me crazy. Everything else would fall over. Drove me nuts. And so just for an organization type tip, guys, put the, don't alphabetize stuff. That's crazy. Put the stuff that you use the most in the front. Where it's easiest to get so, to. So, mine aren't alphabetized. Mine are seasoned salt, garlic powder, onion powder, cilantro, paprika, and cumin. Those are the five, one, two, three, no, six, that I use almost every day. I mean, I use the seasoned salt, garlic powder, and onion powder every day. All the rest of that stuff, I use occasionally, or like, I have them because I needed to test a recipe, but... We really are limited in our spices, and people love our food. So, anyway, so this is our $3 meal, guys. Chicken with potatoes and broccoli salad. This is a winner. So super happy. For five people, this is feeding us for $3. Uh, we, had yep. one, we had one other question. Uh, well, first of all, Trinity says, I've been saving so much money lately on groceries following your tips. Thank you. Yay! Thanks, Trinity. Always glad to have you. Um, and who else asked? Uh, somebody asked, uh, I forgot who it was, what you think of, have, if you, have you tried the air fryer? What did you think mm -hmm. of it? So far it hasn't worked. <laughs> but I think there's a learning curve for it. So I'm, st I'm not giving up. I threw away two instant pots. I feel like I'm starting to kind of get it a little bit. And so, um, yeah. Doing oh, that. a rose for me had one other relevant question. Dave, can you log in this switchboard so you can close it down when we're done? Um, oh, yeah. Thought you were changing the YouTube channel name. Did you change your mind? Actually, I need to go change it to technically on there. We put the graphics on that say "Living on a Dime to Grow Rich." I did not actually change the name on the description in YouTube yet, and I need to go do that. So we had a printer problem, and that had to precede. Our name change, it all happened at once and we had a big issue. Um, Partly because we're in danger of running out of books if we don't yeah. get a printer situation or anything. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, yes. Okay, so Monday show, we are going to talk about working on Social Security, working while you're on Social Security. We've had a lot of questions about me working because I'm on Social Security Disability. So Monday show, I'm going to tell you guys my story and some interesting things that happened and um, how it all worked out and how you can work while you're living on Social Security. So we're going to be talking about that on Monday. Are we going to be cooking something also or just talking about that? No, because we're just going to be talking about that, so... I actually, we're also... Mm -hmm. What? Tell me first. We're just talking about gear. Okay, go ahead. I, I you're saying something else. We're trying to... Um, we're kind of in the midst of hopefully upgrading some of our production gear, so... It, it, things should look better once we get that done and uh, be smoother in some ways. And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, we ordered some equipment that may or may not be here by Monday. So we'll see. If it's here by Monday, we may be working on that as well. Yeah. Working on the new system. But if not, it'll yep. be Wednesday. 
Yeah. So anyway, yay! Well, we're so glad all of you are here. Yay, Chris! Really it's so good you. to see you again. Yes. All right, guys. Please visit us on Monday. Please like, subscribe, and share. We are Living on a Dime to Grow Rich. You can visit us at livingonadime.com. You can check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook if you want to eat better, spend less. The link is in the description below. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>